Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Bros of DK. As you can see, I'm sort of sleeping in my car because last night we drove 700 kilometers to France to get to an abandoned castle that has been left behind for ages and is incredibly historical. The story behind it is even more incredible, but <laughs> now I first gotta wake up and get myself ready. We slept in the car in the middle of these woods, as you can see. It seemed like a great place to sleep. I saw on the map that there's some sort of a lake here and I want to check it out before we go over the fence, like always with exploring. Let's see what this place has to behold. Okay. As you can see, everybody, we came to a little fishing pond, I think. Some sort of a house here. Does somebody live here? I don't think so. I'm not gonna stay here for too long. But as you can see, we have this little fishing pond of somebody. Where have you slept yesterday? Or this night, actually. Now it's time to drive over to the castle. I'm super tired, but this one is worth it, believe me. It's again one of the best ones that I'm ever gonna film on this channel. I've I said I said that many times, everybody. I said many times like this is the best place ever. But I checked it out yesterday night and it seemed like such an historical place. Incredibly beautiful inside and completely locked in time. Let's go over there. Still very tired, everybody, but uh, these are the things you gotta do to film these incredible places around France. They are mostly so far away from my home and I only have the weekend uh, to explore them. So uh, gotta go hard or go home. I'm ready to explore this beauty and let's make it memorable. This documentary will give you a glimpse behind the walls of a dormant 17th century castle. found its origin in the 14th century when they first started to occupy this region of France. Nowadays, not many people of the Lewis family are left behind. The last person living in this place was Mrs. Anne-Louis. But Mrs. Anne-Louis and her son Peter are still around and they don't live that far from the castle. Both of them never go inside of this place anymore. They seem to have lost their interest for the castle. All the artifacts dating back more than 300 years into history and beautiful artifacts that have history written all over them. She now lives with her son Peter 
and her castle has been dormant for more than 10 years. And it's able for us to explore. Let me take you inside of here and show you one of the most incredible and historical abandoned castles in the entire world. Welcome back everybody to another documentary brought to you by the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today we are exploring another memorable abandoned castle in France. This place used to be of Mrs. Anne-Louis and her family history dates back to 1470 when the first Louis was born. This place is just locked in time over the last 10 years and I'm gonna show you what's left behind in here. Let's go. The first thing I want to show you in this place is the grand front entrance, one of the most important parts of the castle. The people that once built it wanted to get this part of the castle exactly right, because this is the first impression what people get when they come into your place. And in here, they did a fantastic job. I was astonished when I first ventured through the doors. <laughs> I didn't come through that door, because that one has not been opened in a very long time. Let me show you. First, I will go back a little bit and show you that grand entrance that I made with the staircases on both sides. It's very fascinating. Oak wood stairway that's now been devouring by dust, spider webs, as well as woodworms, as you can see. It's very unfortunate to see places like these deteriorate in time. But this, everybody, was the grand entrance of the castle. <laughs> Here you would go onto the lands and has now been locked up for more than 10 years. Spider webs are covering the doorway, making it their own. And what's very fascinating about castle hallways not especially this one because this one is very narrow but normally you would have lots of benches in here when people came to the castle and these people were not as important as the people that lived in these places the owners of the castle or the servants would just seat them here and give them a cup of coffee or something else and they were out in a minute and only the very important people would be allowed to go through over this stairway to the top and inside of the castle but first, let's have a look inside of here. Lots of wood. Okay, I suppose back in the day, let me close this up. I suppose back in the day, all the jackets and everything would be in here. But later on, it was converted into a wood bin. Let's venture up this stairway to the top floor and inside of the castle. Wow, what a fantastic sight to behold. I feel like a wealthy person back in the 17th, 1800s, venturing into a French castle. Look at this astonishing view and room that we end up in with a mesmerizing crystalline chandelier above us. Wow, I have to show you this room in great detail. Look at these tapestries on the wall. These rugs that they hang up. This brown color. I just adore it. Wow. This was the grand room where I let the wealthy guests inside of the castle. And these depict former times in France. Napoleon times, 16, 1700s. People, literature people, sitting outside in the garden, probably from a castle as this one. They depict a lavish lifestyle from back in the day. We have this religious painting just sitting here, being devoured by time. 
Wow, there's a lovely tea kettle. And the design leaves it so you cannot spill anything. It's probably made from silver. A half-lit candle. The last one and Louis lit up when she lived in this place. It's always very important to look through the cabinets while you explore these places to see if you can find any history or dates that might relate to the passing of these people or why it has been left behind. This is from 1994, as you can see. There's not much more except for newspapers in this cabinet. Let's close that up. And then right next to it, we have this wonderful upholstery chair. I can see a noble person still sitting in here back in the day. Just imagine this, somebody sitting in this chair. Wonderful red chair, beautiful upholstery over it. And then to this side, except for my back, excuse me, we have another little sitting area with a desk. And that leaves us with two options. Left into the dining area, or right into the leisure area. I'm gonna choose left. Let's venture in there. Everybody, just take it in, this astonishing dining area that we just ended up in. And this one has even more tapestries on the wall. The rugs that cover it are just fascinating in my opinion. I always, whenever I come into such a dining area, can see the people that once used to live here sitting around the table and having a meal. Wow. This is so different from a manor or a house because these people would be served by servants. Have again this wonderful chandelier hanging above the table. This looks more like brass to me. Wow. Beautiful crown molding on the ceiling. But I would have expected like a bigger dining table. This looks like not a very fancy dining table. And these are just, these are also not upholstery chairs, but still very nice, very nice cloth on there. Of course, they are antique. Now we have this cabinet here in the room with the weapon shield of the people in the crown of it. That's just fascinating. Then you know, you're rich, when you can let people make your own furniture. Wow. Soup terrine left here. Nothing in there anymore. It's not a soup terrine, it's just for sweets. Cloths. Just always looking through these cabinets to see if I can see anything interesting especially in these places. Have a look at the teapot that's left here. Isn't that just a fascinating piece? Wow, I just adore it. Let's close this beauty up. Oh, the squeaking, then you know it's old. I can't stop looking at the rugs that are on the wall. Of course, they had some delft plates on the wall here. Wow. Depicting Chinese parks. As you can see, they are three of the same ones, three identical ones. And then, of course, we are in France. And France always hosts their built-in cabinets. This one seemed to be locked. But these were the plates that were used when the people had dinner. 
all left here to gather dust. But back in the day, they would serve for great memories. Wow. Sauce dispensers and everything is still here. Let's look for a logo on there. This one seems to be stuck, stuck to each other. There's like a little letter in the front. There's no logo on the bottom. Okay, let's close this beauty up. Let's go further. Then we have this little sitting area. We could have a coffee after your dinner. Probably shit chat a little bit. Some water jugs underneath. Another tea kettle. These people must have loved tea. I love the flower that's on the top of here. Wow. Do you see what I see? You probably, yeah, maybe you see it, but there's a hidden door here, everybody. Wow. <laughs> leading to the servants' quarter. This is very typical for these places because servants would sleep separately and would live separately from the owners of these castles. They sometimes didn't even want to see these people because they were not on the same level as them. Let's have a look. Here must be the kitchen. Yes, and it is. And of course the basement where the owners of this place also did not come back in the day. Let's see some more newspapers. Oh yes, here we see a date, the 19th of August 2010. One of the last newspapers, one of the last dates in this place. Here the servants would cook up the food for the owners of the castle. Wow, there's a lot still left behind. Pots and pans and everything. I see coffee grinders above there. Lots of oil lamps as well at the top of it. Fascinating. And a lot more food as well here. <laughs> Attention everybody. The glasses, there's obstacles in front of the door it says over here. So please be careful when you open it. Even some sunflowers left over here. But let's go back to that part first because we will venture into the basement later in the video. This, to my opinion, is one of the most beautiful wall carpets in this entire house. <laughs> Why do I say a house? This is a castle, Leslie. Mind your words and mind your manners. <laughs> you will offend these people. But look at it. It's just a wonderful king and queen. And then we have this warrior, I think. He's looking towards the girl and the horse besides them. And just the quality on it is fascinating. Oh, this must be worth an invaluable amount of money. <laughs> I'm not gonna even bother to think how much it's worth. We have this wonderful night depicted here on this painting. And many more things, plates and stuff. Wow, these were to store liquors. And you could take them out to the field these people took them out mostly hunting. They had this little box and they could bring it out. After hunting, they could all have a drink, as you can see, but you would also display it in your dining area. I see them a lot in dining areas in abandoned castles. More of the chairs and probably another built-in cabinet. Again, completely filled with plates and cups and all these things. I love to see it. Oh. <laughs> Guess what? I just saw another hidden door. This one was quite invisible to me. But it seems to be completely locked up. Unfortunately. We will find out where it leads later on in the video. One more wall carpet. I cannot stop looking at these tapestries that they hung up on the wall here in this little entrance hall. Wow, but that takes us now to the leisure part of the house. The sitting area, the living area, however you want to call it. Where the people probably spend the most time. At first this little room looks like a big mess, but it's actually not. 
when I go over to this side, you can see a magnificent piano area, a grand wing piano in the middle of the room with another tapestry slash wall work here on the wall. And this one depicts a lush landscape somewhere in France or somewhere around the world. These trees look very foreign to me. <laughs> wow, this one is just amazing. Let's see if it still plays. Wow, still plays after all these years. And this one is from 1955 and made in Paris. Playal. Let's look at the inside of it. How does it look? Oh, they have these papers with like white powder on there. Probably isn't what I thought I think it is, but fascinating. Again, lots of paintings all scattered over the walls. I love this one of this lady, just casually relaxing. But if you look down here, there's a little dog at her lap. A royal lady. And this room is designed like the bedroom. You can see the paintings all above there. And everything just made tailored to this room. Look at the side table. Completely made out of marble with woodwork and gold plating. Everything is designed on this one. Here we have another lady, casually chilling, <laughs> with a fan in her hands. A display cabinet underneath. Let's see what's in here. Good day. Wow. Even upholstery on the back of here. Close this one gently. There we go. To either side of it, we have these upholstery chairs. Flowers worked into them. And then have a look at this side of the room. That's a complete mess, everybody. Everything has been just thrown around. And I don't know why. There's a little label on here that just says what it is. It's just a frame of a painting. A chandelier hanging in the middle of the room. Crystalier chandelier. I at first thought that this was a bench, but it's not. These are separate chairs that we see here in front of us. I thought it was like this corner bench, but it's actually not. L'illustration, okay, this is very fascinating. L'illustration, this is a magazine from back in the day. It's not around anymore nowadays. But I found the castle of the people that used to produce these in France. I'm gonna link the castle up here. In this castle that, that I filmed, the people lived that designed and made this magazine back in the days. It's just a magazine talking about life and different things with advertisements and you can even see the cost of the magazine. 118 fr fr francs for, for a year abonnement of so that's not much back in the day. Um, that that should be a, was a lot, but it's not much right now, I should say. Very fascinating to always see it going back in these noble places. We have this chassis. No, it's not a chassis long. It's just a sofa, an Apple Street red sofa with matching pillows. Let me show it in great detail. Love, love, love to see these things. And that, I think, leads us to the tower of the castle. But first, have a look up here. We have another one of those worked-in paintings. Yes, and here we wander into the library that's in the tower of the castle. A round library like you see it in the movies. Wow. This is just amazing to see. It's very surreal to be in here. Here the people used to come back in the day. 
They used to sit here at the desk, have a book in front of them, study it, learn about different things. There's still a book opened up here with thousands and thousands of pages. I'm halfway in the book and it says 1,827 on the page count. A little ink jar that you could close up like this. You could write with. I see some gold books over here. Wow. And here to the side you can see how long this place has been abandoned. Spider webs are completely taking it over and making it their own. And then from the living area, you could wander straight into what's most, one of the most enjoyable rooms of the house. The pool room. Oh, this is like a man cave, everybody. <laughs> Let me show you first this room in great detail. Wow. Here, the man of the house, like it used to go, would have enjoyed themselves all day long. Just drinking whiskey, having great talk. I can see them still here in this room. It's just fascinating. Okay, let me show you what's left in here. Because it's quite, quite fascinating. I need to turn up the light a little bit because it's dark in here. Just a bit more light. We also have a fireplace in this room. Okay, this is, oh, you know, we saw already a lot of fireplaces, excuse me. I did not cover them in great detail. It's a very small fireplace, just enough for one block of wood. These two vases to either side of it. Wow. Then a record player right in the middle where they could play some tunes and just have a nice time here around the pool table. Absolutely love it. And we have these newer chairs here in the corner of the room. These are leather upholstered sofas, but they are probably uh, maybe 40, 50 years old, not like the other furniture that's inside of the house. A painting above there of a lady looking very sad actually. More paintings around the walls of this room. And you can see from the imprint of the wall that there used to be something else here that it has been taken down. That's also very interesting. A lamppost, the upholstery chair right next to it, and we have another one right over here. Oh, this one is very fascinating. The flower design again coming back and over here as well oh this is cool here you can see the, the curtains would be hung up like this and that's just the imprint from the years that it has hung there but now they are loose and then everybody the pool table to my opinion one of the most beautiful ones that I've ever encountered every single detail this pool table has been thought about. You can see yeah, it has faces in the side of it. It has this beautiful counter worked into here. You can like operate it like this. Keep your points. Oh, this is unfortunately completely decayed. Oh, every corner of it has this design and it seems like there are keyholes all around it but it's actually not they are not hollow on the inside wow what a masterpiece and then behind us we have the scoreboard with the cues above it and these are many cues left here Yeah, they could count the points of the game. Table, a beautiful clock on top of there. 
Unfortunately, I have not found many artifacts of the people yet. It seems like they took a lot out of this place. When Anne Louis left it behind at our last day. But that's sometimes good. We have the stamp over here. What does this little box do? Hmm. I'm not sure. But this used to be a very small accountancy desk where the people would do their accountancy of them, of course, but would the other do, otherwise do on an accountancy desk. You can close it up like this and lock it up. It doesn't close anymore. It has this beautiful design on the front of it. And then we have this last corner of this room. Again, more beautiful paintings. This, this crest that we see here on the side of it looks like the crest that we also saw on the cabinet. And these people that are depicted on it might be the owners of this place. Wow. And here we see an article of people standing around a billiards table. Cool. Oh, look at this face that we have over here. And then a marble clock face as well to this side. Fascinating things in here, everybody. Just fascinating to my opinion. I can wander through this castle for hours. I've now already been in here, in here for four hours and I still haven't covered the top floor and probably not all the floors and the downstairs as well. But it doesn't matter, I just love it. Before I go further to the last room of the downstairs, there are two more things that I forgot to show you just a moment ago. But we have this stroller here in the corner of the room. Let me turn on the light that you can see it a little bit better in detail because it's actually a very fascinating one. A very old one as well. These very big steel wheels on the bottom of it. And here they would carry the children around the property and town with it rocks around, has upholstery all over it and it's just a very fascinating design. Wow, look at the handle here in the front. I can, oh, this must have been such a treasure walking your children around in this one. And it has like this hole underneath here. I'm not going to open it up because I will rip it apart, but don't know what the hole is for. And as well in this room, we have this rocking horse from a child left here. Again, a very vintage one. Wow. And this one has these wooden wheels that you would also see in horse carriages. And probably real horse hair in the tail of it. I now find myself back in the hallway and this room here to the left we have already seen. This was the pool area and the leisure area. But now it's time to see what's on this side. I myself have not been in here so I'm quite excited to see what this one has to behold. Oh everybody look over here. This was the door that leads to the dining area. The other secret door that we just filmed but it's completely locked up now. Ah. Oh, this is a welcome, welcome. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. We have a built-in bed. Probably the last place where Anne-Louis used to sleep. Because she was very old when she last lived in this place. And she had to probably sleep downstairs. And this might have been her bedroom because I don't see her walking up that stairway every single day and every single night. Look at this bed. Beautiful crown molding. It's not crown molding. It's, it's like woodwork on these wooden walls. Wow. A Pearl Street bed all around. I love the flower design on it. It's a very fascinating design. We have a picture frame 
of somebody here. Might this have been her son, Peter? He looks like a very intellectual man. And from the outside, behind him, you can see that he probably was standing in front of this castle because I recognize the windows and the shutters from it. These bomb shells here on the floor. Don't know why they are here in this bedroom, but yeah, why not? And then we have this wonderful painting hanging above the bed. I would be worried every single night when I was sleeping in here that this thing would fall on my face. Okay. Right next to the bed, we have doorways that probably lead to bathrooms. But above these doorways, we also have paintings worked into the wall. You only see this in castles, never in manors, never in villas. And also only in France. Oh, what's this? It seems like we've ended up in some sort of an archive. Wow. Many, many documents stored in here. From back in the day. Maps from France, I can see. I can see a pocket knife laying here. Lots of booklets. Even a little bit of wine to sneak in some light drinking. <laughs> Wonderful. I did not notice it yet, but I was literally walking on a rug made from a polar bear or something like that. That's this white fur. Oh my God. If this is really from a polar bear, this is quite sad. But back in the day, people didn't used to care about animals that much. Look at this enormous bookcase that we have here on the side of the room. Wonderful books in there. Wow. Very literature people. And also very big books. <laughs> then we have this artwork. A drawing of a statue. Fascinating drawing. And also a little desk in this room. And here the people used to do work. And yeah, we have this telephone over here. An old school vintage telephone. Probably some people on my channel have used it before. I really like to see them. I now learned that this third horn is used to listen if somebody wants to listen in on the conversation or wants to participate in the conversation like we have a third caller right nowadays. <laughs> the watches of Anne-Louis are even still here. A sitting corner where she could read a book at night. She even had this little poof underneath her chair that she could pull out, pull out, but it's pretty stuck underneath there. Could put her feet up, read a book underneath this light. Fascinating. And to this side of the room, we have the mirror with the fireplace underneath. And everything in this room has been thought of. It has been completely designed for this room only. Wow, a marble fireplace underneath. You can see the smoke has built up over the years on the marble and the stone. And it's just a wood fireplace. Maybe she used the wood that we saw in the hallway earlier to fire up this fireplace. That's a possibility. I also really like the vases that have been worked into the side of the fireplace here. Okay, let's head back. But first, let me show you these gardens on the painting in the castle of Arnold. Let's now venture up this stairway to the top floor and show you the most private part of the house. I just adore the design of this stairway where you can walk up on two sides. Literally something you would see in a movie. Wow, this blue carpet on the stairway. It's also very fascinating and it takes us up to the top floor. Oh, I noticed something here. I love these things. It's like a calendar and every day you turn it over, it flips a day. You just go a little closer. There's like a mechanism in here that does that. When you flip it back, it goes one day back. I would love to see the inside of it. 
we have, we have the Arc of Triumph in Paris and the Eiffel Tower. And here you would have the Mons. Wow. And that takes us to the top floor, everybody. Over here, the stairway joins together and makes a big one again. And we are greeted by this cabinet over here. Oh, and the jackets of Anne-Louis are still in here. Wow, you can see our bond, her jackets. And even here to the side of the cabinet, we have a red raincoat. Wow, look at the keys that are hidden inside of it. Somebody hid some keys in the jacket. Okay, let's close that up and let's go further on the top floor. Here to the left first. Let's see where these people slept and where they spent actually most of their lives. This one seems to be locked up, unfortunately. A painting here to the side. We have one little bedroom that we venture into at first. This looks like a child bed, a child's bedroom, where maybe Peter used to sleep back in his day. The son of the family or another child of the family, who knows. Still made after all these years of abandonment. A vanity to the side of it, with a water jug on top of there and a marble top. Oh, look at this, everybody. I really adore it. We have this vintage car over here. It says six on the front. And then a steam, a toy steam powered machine. Wow. And even the plushy bears, the teddy bears of the child are still lying here after all these years. That isn't, if that isn't fascinating, I don't know what is. He even had a little accountancy desk in his room. Wow. Flower wallpaper that would reveal his little area where he kept his puzzles, his wallpapers, his posters, everything still in there. Ah, and then we have some sort of an adult's bedroom. Look at this one, wow. Here the noble people would sleep, right next to the child actually. But there is a teddy bear on the middle of the bed, but I think it has been placed there. Still made after all those years again, very fascinating design. Oh, I love these nightstands, round nightstands. Okay, and on top of it, we can see a picture of the same boy that we saw in the other bedroom downstairs coming back. So this might have been our only child, Peter, that, that, yeah, that she adored and she kept all throughout the house. This might be the last room where Anne-Louis used to sleep. Lots of religious depictions, again, above the bed. And over here we can see drawings of the town, I think. Uh, we see people sailing ships and probably Peter made this. Oh. So many artifacts to look at in this place. Wow, this fireplace with the mirror above it is just totally amazing. Look at the clock on top of here. A gold clock, blue accents. <sighs> what a piece, everybody. What a piece. And then the fireplace underneath with a bellow on top. It, say, it says Argos on the front of it. The bellow doesn't seem to function anymore. Wow. Then it seems like we have one last bedroom. Oh my God. Another bedroom 
built into the wall. It's beautiful wallpaper on it. Again, probably a child's bed because it's very tiny. Still made after those years. And typically French, as you can see. Just take it in, everybody. Take this beauty in. This cord here next to the bed, they used to turn on and off the light. It does not function anymore nowadays. Then they had this little doorway here right next to it that reveals a little washing area. You could put some water in here with a water jerk. Wash your face at night. Chinese calendar in here as well. 1968 it says on that one. Let's close this beauty up. Wow. Then a the fireplace with a mirror above it. Gold plated. And even this painting on top of it of a few girls sitting at the lake feeding a swan. We also see some African art in this place. A face mask. <coughs> Of course, France had great influence on the colonies in Africa, and so they probably also had something to do with, with it back in the day. A bellow down there and a walking cane. <sighs> what a room, everybody. What a room. And here on the wall, we have another wall carpet. This one is less fancy, but it seems to be it has Arabic inscripts on it, as you can see on the sides of it. I don't know exactly if it's Arabic or if it's Egyptian, but it's somewhere from that part of the world. The same telephone as well, left here. <laughs> so many things to look at. Look at these glasses, I truly love them. Wow. You can see you would held it in front of your face like this, and that's how you would read with these glasses. <laughs> Let's place them back nicely. And then it's still time for this side of the upstairs floors. Let's see what's, what this side has to reveal everybody. Ooh, a little bit less fancy than the other side, but definitely not yet for the workers. Still, I think these would be guests' bedrooms. Uh, when guests came over there, you had some place to sleep them. What's this? Seems like some sort of a hat, but it's now completely devoured. A statue underneath here. Oh, I love this. We have like this built-in cabinet, and then they have like this little washing area with a chamber pot underneath. The predecessor of the bidet. This is, wow, beautiful jack on top of there. Another enormous bedroom on this side. Probably again, also a guest bedroom. Still looks very fancy for this place. A Pearl Street bed, still made, everything still in it. Wow, very fancy. And then we have the screen divider here. They definitely also loved their Chinese and Asian antiques, as you can see. They must have been pretty expensive back in that day because you only see them in castles, not in normal houses. A painting of a lush landscape, alpine mountains in the back. Wow, an accountancy desk to this side. Very, very beautiful. The wallpaper is just letting loose in this room, giving up, saying, take me. And then we come into another, oh, this is another bathroom, but it's again in the tower of the castle. The paws, a bathtub with paws underneath, Paw claws. Wow. 
fancy bathtub. But again, a very old school bathroom to my opinion. The decay in this place is truly happening. Let's open this one up. Everything is still in there. Look at this. <laughs> Got these poles up here. This flask with some sort of an elixir in there. Just close that up nicely again. And even the furniture in this room is shaped to the curvature of the, the tower, as you can see. It's shaped to the curvature. Wow. I want to point out one more thing in this room, and that's that electricity was added on later. But when this castle was built, this place, of course, did not have any electricity, and it's just added on at a later time. It is shining down from the stairway. Wow. Oh, I forgot a room over here. Let's quickly look at it. And yes, we have another bedroom. So many bedrooms in this place where people used to sleep. It must have been a very big family back in the day. Back then, everybody lived together in one house. Now we're all divided over the whole world. We only see each other at Christmas. Here they had again a bathroom in the tower of the castle. Fascinating. Okay, let's head up this stairway. Winding staircase to the top floor. And you can unfortunately already see that the building is cracking up over here. Coming here to some sort of a top floor. Looks very unstable to me. Oh my god. Here you can truly see the decay of the castle. It needs a lot of renovation work to be ever used again. That's such an unfortunate thing with these French castles. Nobody seems to care about them or have the money to restore them anymore. And then they are just left like this. <sighs> this breaks my heart, seeing this. A child used to sli sleep up here in this room, but now nobody does anymore. Okay, I have to go into this room <laughs> over these wooden beams. <laughs> This one's still very nice. Look at it. it. Seems again like a guest bedroom or a child's bedroom up here. A little studying desk. The clock face right on it. From when is this paper? It's the sixth or the, of the seventh of 66. Wow, this one is 60 years old everybody 60 years old again wonderful wallpaper in this room oh my god then we got another bedroom down here <laughs> look at this very old steel bed that we have here a doctor's suitcase of some sort and then this little upholstery chair in the corner of it with this little stove right next to it this setup is so incredibly cute it's like one two one one yeah half the scale as it normally used to be child's toys from back in the day they are just fascinating and then the stroller as well what a piece to behold I see that there is one last flight of stairs. 
Okay, I'm curious to see where that's gonna take me. Let's go up here. Ooh, it seems like the highest floor of the castle. Got one door. Again, locked. But then, oh, no way that I'm gonna walk on here. This is the top that I just showed you. It doesn't seem worth risking my life for, because it's just falling apart of here. Falling apart. The last part of the house, venturing down the stairs to the basement. Let's check that out, because in castles, basements are mostly very, very interesting. And hold lots of historical pieces. I'm not sure about this one. I can already see some plastic chairs. That's not a good sign, but we will see. Ooh. Let's go first here to the right. We have this bicycle laying here on its top. This was the electricity of the house. Wow. Look at that. That were the switches to turn off and on the electricity. Of course, later added on. I don't know where these jaws up there would be used for. Look at those. Oh, the wine cellar, of course. You gotta have a wine cellar in the castle. Very important, my, my friends, my dear viewers. And still some bottles of wine left here. And they're all still filled with wine. That's just totally amazing. Ah, attributes for the horses. You put your shoes in when you're riding a horse. All the different things to hook up the horse. Wow. I'm very curious what's in this bag. Oh, it seems like there are some coats in here. Very wonderful. I need to take this out. Give me a moment. I just opened it up, but they are not coats. Maybe these are rugs or something like that. Yeah, they seem like coats, but I'm not sure. They are indeed very, very big. And if anybody knows what these are, let me know. Of course, at the end of the video, I will clean this up and I'll close the back again. But let's now go further through the basement. Okay, a straw, some bowling pins we have laying here on the floor. Oh, these are fascinating. These you would throw like this, and then you would knock down these pins in a game of old school bowling. One last room here. That's a food storage area. Of course, you would keep the food in the basement because it's very cool in here. Wow. This one has been standing here for a very long time. The mold is growing on there. <laughs> I love the design of this basement. It's just fascinating. It says May of 1923 on there. And then on the other side of the stairway, we come to this part of the castle. And we were here earlier in the video, if you can still remember. Uh, this was the kitchen area. And downstairs here, the workers would work as you can see, these are very empty, these rooms, but these were storage areas for the food and everything. And then to this side, we have the grand kitchen of the place where all the food was prepared. Wow, an enormous stove underneath an exhauster. Very beautiful French wood stove underneath there. Irons as well up here. Look at those. Very hefty, very heavy. And then in the middle of the room, we as well had this enormous stove where probably a few workers simultaneously would cook food for the owners of the castle. Very rusted up, not able to open that anymore. 
an oil lantern above here, lighting up this room. Probably workers, servants have not been in here for a very, very long time. This cabinet has completely collapsed. We have another little area, preparation area. Oh, and these were the food elevators. And yes, they would come out in the kitchen upstairs. These don't function anymore. The cables are completely broken. Wow, what a find. See a stairway over here. And I think this is what leads us to probably the servants area where the servants would sleep and work. This one's locked up, but we still have this staircase going up here. Building cabinets again in the walls, everywhere in this place. This one seems to be locked up as well. Okay. Yes, these were definitely the workers' quarters. Very bland. They didn't spend a lot of money on these. Yeah, they spent a little bit on it, but as you can see here, the workers of the castle used to sleep. We have the stove here, that is a simple stove with a small mirror above it. Lots of books in here as well. And then a little bed, two beds actually, over here to this side, where two workers used to sleep. Whoa, there's like a bee's nest in here. Lots of bees flying around. Okay, I'm gonna leave this room behind. No <laughs> need for me to be in there. Oh, I just noticed something. Okay, let me get this rock in front of this door. Okay. There is literally a wall rug, or, or a door rug as you can call it, over here. Wow. But also I want to give you a little closer look at what the beds of the servants used to look like. Very bland in comparison to the luxurious beds that the owners of the castle used to sleep in. I can see there's one more flight of stairs. Let's of course take that. Oh, I almost fell there, excuse me. This, oh, this one leads back into the castle. This is the room that we just filmed. Okay, let's go back to the servants area. It seems to go all the way up the tower. Oh my God. The decay in this room is very present. Look at this. All these pictures of these people left here. I love the setup that we have here in front of us. There's enormous bookcases on the side of it. There's Jeroen joining me. And we have this train car, this train railroad track from the children that used to sleep, and that used to live, and the workers' quarters as well. <laughs> A miniature tour, castle here on the floor as well. A doll sitting over there. I just have to point out the little furniture that's in this room. As you can see this, they have this little washing table with even an emblem in the front of it with this tiny chair next to it. This used to be the, the toys where the children of the castle used to play with. You can see even the inside of the sink is designed and it's made from porcelain. Oh, these I call real toys. Last for ages. Tiny doorway. That's unfortunately locked, but I can see on this side, we have another one. Let's go into here. Oh my God. 
the whole wall is collapsing. Look at this. And this tells us the story of the rich versus the poor. They didn't spend any time on this one or as little money as possible because you can see the castle itself is still in a very good shape. But over here, everything is just literally falling apart. Building cabinet, lots of things still in there. Oh, these are army pictures, as you can see. Because the man of, the, of Anne Louis was probably, yeah, he was a colonel in the army. You can see them sitting outside of the castle, having a great time. Here we can see another portrait of them. Wow. Many more army pictures down here. Oh, are these protheses? Yes, yes they are. But they are not, I, I found other protheses. No, these are not protheses. I think these are to straighten boots or something like that. Okay, I found protheses in an abandoned house of a lady that lost her legs back in the 1900s. I will link that one up there. But wow. We have another room behind here. That's completely falling apart, that I'm not gonna go into. Look at this little... <laughs> oh, this is like a baby crib, but a very tiny one for girls and boys to play with. Wonderful. I'm not gonna go underneath there because this is gonna fall on my head. Okay, let's venture into the last part of the castle. Let's have a look. Let's take the winding staircase to the top floor. Ooh, we're coming into the tower of the castle right now. Okay. There's a water tank up here. Of course, with water pressure, you have to put it as high as possible. Oh, this doesn't seem like something that I want to walk on. The floor is just falling apart. No way. I'm going to walk on this one. Okay. Let me now take you outside, show you the outside of the castle and the horse carriages as well that have been, uh, um, the carriage house. I don't know if there are any horse carriages, unfortunately, but let me take you there right now. Finally, everybody, some fresh air. I've been, well, how long have we been inside? Uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the morning until now it's two, one o'clock, two, yeah. So around five hours, we've been inside of this enormous castle. What a place. <laughs> I truly enjoyed this exploration. A walk back into time. But I want to point out some things about the outside of the castle as well. As you can see, this is the workers' quarter that we were just inside, that we were just were inside. But you can see the stone on this one is exposed. And that's because they built it very cheaply. And the stone on the part where the rich people, the high class people used to live, it's very smooth. And that's how you can see the difference between the worker side and the rich owner side. And of course, as well, when we go closer to the back door, you can see all the design on there. All the beautiful design worked into the castle. It's very neat and very beautiful. Well, but let's now walk to the front. I want to check out the uh, horse carriage uh, houses and probably also some workers houses. Hopefully we find some horse carriages, but I'm doubting it. But what I also found very peculiar about this place is that the whole backyard, as you just saw, there's nothing, not a single statue, not a single bush, not a single beautifully cut bush, nothing, just the castle. That's everything that's here. Look at this place. It's one of the most beautiful castles from the outside that I've ever seen. Those two towers here in the front, they are quite amazing. Wow. And this was the front entrance of the place. Here the people came in and they were greeted by this facade. 17th century, left behind and forgotten. Just a total shame. Over there are the horse carriage houses. And let me show you those as well. It's a long walk here. I definitely won't get a belly while exploring. 
it seems like we have some sort of a tower over here. Very high grass where we have to venture through. I want to have a look in the tower, what its purpose was. Let's see if we can open it up. You can give it to me, I will take a look. Very easily closed. Uh, it seems like just the very bland tower. Not much to see in here. Okay, let's close this beauty back up. What is it? Oh yes, a grinding wheel we have over here. A grinding wheel, a wine barrel. And yeah, you see a plow and some animals would have been housed in here. Okay, I think I'm gonna end it off here by the tractor. Let me give it to you, Jeroen. Oh, there's some house. Of course, I totally forgot about it. This seems like a real house. See if it's open. It's locked. It's sort of closed. What's in there? Junk. Junk. Oh, I see a little pond here. <laughs> this is cool, everybody. Look at this bridge. You don't want to cross it anymore. No freaking way. Over here on the bridge, everybody, I'm gonna end off this week's video. I'm gonna thank you all for watching this magnificent castle that was locked in time. Wow, what a place. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and you wanna see more of these epic explorations. Write me a nice comment in the comment section. There is also a link in the description for Patreon that you can support us and help us out going these adventures around the world. I want to thank you all and I will see you next week in another epic exploration. Bye bye. I love you very much.